Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here, Moss Pawn and Gun. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the Keystone Arms Cricket. Uh, these are very underappreciated rifles, I believe. Uh, you know, a lot of YouTube channels, I suppose, they get to talking about all kind of different firearms and everything, but I don't know. I just kind of like to appreciate some of the uh, guns that are more suited for the children. Oh yeah. All right. And that's what this rifle, uh, the intended market, is for children. Well, it's a youth size rifle. <clears throat> Single shot, you have to cock it on each shot. So, I mean, it's a very safe little build here, and it's perfectly sized for the youth. You know, they're small, easy to handle, safe guns. They're just a really good choice for, um, for a kid's first gun all the way around. That's it. So, from a standpoint of construction, um, you know, they are very well-made rifles. Uh, this particular one, or actually both of these have laminate stocks. Uh, like Chad said, a bolt action, a single shot firearm. You have to cock it for each shot. Um, some of the other models actually do have a key lock on them. It's a little button that you push up from the bottom and you can lock the gun, which this, these don't have because they have the laminate stocks, but some of the other models do. So if you want to lock them and keep them from being used, you can do so. Um, this particular gun has, or both these actually have a slightly heavier barrels. They're threaded for a suppressor. Uh, we are going to be running some suppressors on these today. These are Huntertown Arms Guardians. We've got a micro and then a standard Guardian. And you can see that it's just a slightly smaller can. Uh, this particular suppressor is probably going to be a little bit uh, more well suited for uh, something like a pistol, a small 22 caliber pistol. Uh, but these rifles are definitely fun to shoot. We're going to play with them a little bit for you today, shoot some random objects, and uh, should be a nice little video. Uh, make sure your kids uh, see these because they're going to love this. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's get, get started. started. Yep, let's do it. that damn communist mind control. Dude, what was I thinking? <sighs> All right, we've got some sodas and some apples. All right, to shoot for you today. One thing I forgot to mention in the intro there was that this uh, company actually makes their own little scopes too, little cricket scopes. And uh, you know, fairly uh, decent little, little setup. So we're gonna play around with it today. Shoot a couple of things for you. This is a very uh, fun and informal video. We're not really trying to break any records here. You saw I loaded the gun just that quickly. You put the round in the chamber, close the bolt, cock it, and it's ready to shoot. Uh, that is the safety. There is no manual safety other than when it's cocked, it's ready to go. All right, we're going to take out a couple of sodas first. Wow. It's funny how uh, loud of a pop that soda makes when you shoot it. You know, the, this gun is completely suppressed. So that pop you heard, that was the soda blowing up. That wasn't, you know, anything else other than that. Not one of my apples over, it's okay. The gun ejects on its own. So basically you just round in the chamber. You have to put the round directly in the chamber. There's no kind of feed ramp or anything. Close the bolt, cock it, and it's ready to shoot. Oh yeah, smokes those sodas quite nicely. Let's see if we can get on a roll here. Take a couple out, a little bit. Pick up the pace a little bit here. All right. Those apples are gonna be a little bit more difficult to hit. Oh yeah, dead center hit on that one. These things are just great. Uh, this was actually one of the first rifles that I bought for Jacob, and uh, he likes it even to this day. I mean, he's got a, a 223 bolt action now, you know, a couple other odds and ends that I bought him. I uh, built him a seven millimeter Mauser Sporter that he likes a lot, but he still shoots his cricket. Oh yeah. You know, one of the neat things about this rifle too is that even for an adult, you know, if you wanted a little backpacking rifle just to, to kill small game with, while you're out on the trail or a good little camp gun, you know, you put a suppressor on this, stick it in your backpack or take it to camp with you and you got you a nice little rig that's definitely capable of doing the job. All right, let's see if we can take out a couple of our apples next. All the ammunition that we're going to be running today is all subsonic. Uh, this particular load is the Remington Subsonic 
We're going to move on to a few other loads in a moment. Hopefully you can tell kind of the difference in the sound signature between the uh, two different suppressors. So let's uh, see if we can take out these apples here. <laughs> let's see, uh, this, this uh, makes me recall of uh, who was that man, William Tell, that uh, shot the apples off people's head. I don't imagine you have too many chances to uh, get that one right. You know, somebody's going to stand there with an apple on their head. I uh, definitely don't uh, recommend any of you kids do that if you're watching. Shoot them off the top of the berm. Don't shoot them off someone's head. I grazed that one, but I still hit it. That one before it was a nice, uh, well-centered hit. It definitely uh, did a number on that apple. I figure the apple, you know, being a little bit more dense, kind of hard, maybe it'd make a good target for this uh, gun. Oh yeah. We're going to get a close-up look at some of those apples here in a minute, see what they look like after being hit. We've got some other uh, fun things planned as well for the rest of the video here. All right, one more apple. Look at that. He's sitting there laughing at me. Let me let me shoot him again. And then I'm going to swap up with Chad, give him a moment. He's going to shoot this other one with the micro on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm going to let the suppressor, eh, it doesn't really get warm at all, but we're going to let this gun cool down a bit, and uh, Chad's going to have a go. Let's see how we fare. This is uh, pretty fun. It's actually a lot more fun than it looks. Uh, I think Dad might actually uh, play with this gun a lot more than Junior will, depending on how you run it. You know, one thing that I didn't really mention either is that with a suppressor, the nice thing about having a suppressor on a small gun like this is that if, uh, if a child is sensitive to... Uh, you know, the noise of the firearm. This is a good way to get them to understand the mechanics of the gun, uh, the minor recoil forces generated, uh, little features like that that can allow them to just get used to shooting the gun without the noise uh, bothering them. Um, especially some of you have very small children that get into shooting at a very young age. Um, I know I started shooting when I was around five or six. So sometimes when you've got a four or five year old, six year old, of course you're letting them shoot with supervision. You're not just gonna turn them loose with a random gun. Um, but sometimes they can be a little bit um, fidgety when it comes to the uh, noise or report of the gun. The suppressor is a great way to, uh, you know, remove that factor from the equation. It's also neat when, uh, you'll see in a minute when we shoot some steel, it's got a really neat sound when you don't have to worry about hearing the report of the gun. You just hear the uh, steel getting smacked. I'll shoot a piece of steel for you real quick so you can hear what I'm talking about. Then we'll let Chad have a go here. See, that's kind of neat, you know, the way you hear the, uh, the steel ring out. But uh, anyway, let's swap up here and we're going to move on with some other stuff. I've got some uh, other neat things planned for this video. All right, I'm going to take a few shots of the Keystone Cricket here. And this particular rifle is outfitted with the Guardian Micro can. I think it has two less baffles than the full-size Guardian. Um, not quite as quiet, but um, it'll still do a number on these uh, subsonics here. These are Remington 40 grain subs. Uh, I'm going to give a few shots here, take out these sodas, just to give you an example of how much uh, fun this little rifle is and also how well this can actually works for being as small as it is. Let's take out some sodas. And those things really do pop, don't they? The sodas popping are a lot louder than the gun going off with the suppressor. And they blow up. Yeah, it can's a little bit louder than the full size Guardian, but it still uh, quiets them up pretty well. All right, one more can.
Oh yeah. Little Keystone Cricket does a pretty good job. You know, I always wondered if a uh, jar of peanut butter would stop a... What are you doing? I like peanut butter. That's not for eating, it's for shooting. I always wanted to know if a jar of peanut butter would stop a 22 round. Uh, that's what we're about to find out here. This is just kind of some fun redneck science. So you're walking home and uh, somebody pulls out a 22 and says, I'm gonna kill you. And you hold the jar of peanut butter out and you stop the bullet with the peanut butter. Oh, with the end? Yeah, with the end, end okay. to end. So if you were like carrying it in your front jacket pocket or something and they tried to shoot you through the heart, you know? If right? it would stop it, yeah. It might look a little funny going down the road with this. It might. Yeah. Well, we're gonna try it. Let's see if it stops the uh, 22. It's a subsonic 40 grain uh, lead nose, 22 ammunition into a jar of peanut butter. Let's try it, why not? I want another bite. No. All right, let's see if a jar of peanut butter will stop a 22 round. Well, the lid popped off. Let's see what we got down there. This is uh, actually meant to be sort of a teaser to a, a couple of videos we're gonna be doing soon. Uh, it's gonna be called, What is Bulletproof? And we're gonna be shooting a lot of random objects because you know, you see in movies all the time where people jump behind stuff and they take cover behind really random objects. And you know, the bullets uh, seemingly stop or blocked, you know, by these objects. Of course, we know this is complete fantasy and uh, we're going to show some of those instances uh, in some of the other videos moving forward. Uh, we've got a lot more uh, you know, neat things to shoot with the Cricut today, but let's have a look at our peanut butter jar there. Oh, that's pathetic. Look at that jar of peanut butter. Oh, man, one, later one of these cows is gonna come over here and lick this and he's gonna be <laughs> licking the top of his mouth for like a week straight. So it, it looks like if you were holding a jar of peanut butter and somebody shot at you with a 22, you probably would not survive. So there's your uh, redneck ballistics for the day. Um, yeah, I don't want to step in this. That, uh, it, it doesn't look like just like peanut butter. It looks like other things too. Well, that is completely disgusting. Uh, this is going different directions than this needs to. So let's move on with some other things. That's looking pretty disgusting. Yeah. All right, we're gonna shoot some cupcakes. That's right. All you kids eating all those sweets. I'm gonna learn you. <laughs> Holy moly, it took off. Wow, holy crap, man. Talk about a sugar high, right? All right, let's try a black one. Went right through it. I guess that one, I must have grazed it on the bottom and made it fly up. Let's try one more shot, see if I knock the icing off. <laughs> it sounds like something out of a damn cartoon. Not bad. All right. Shooting a few cupcakes. A lot of your parents are gonna be wondering why your kids are asking you uh, to go buy cupcakes to shoot. Like I saw the guys on the YouTube channel. All right, one more cupcake and we're gonna move on to greater things. And by greater things, I mean spam. Not too bad. All right, let's move on with life here. All right, we're gonna see how many cans of Spam it takes to stop a 22. I can't imagine that uh, some potted meat won't stop a 22. Sorry, we got four cans of potted meat. Oh yes, this is getting interesting. Oh yeah, that'll work. All right, let's see what happens here. Four cans of potted meat versus a uh, subsonic 22. Let's see if we can stop one. Potted meat ballistics gel? Potted meat ballistics gel. Ballistics poor, meat. Poor man's ballistics meat, yes. All right, let's see if we can uh, get a 22 to stop in a can of potted meat. All right. Hmm. Did it stop? 
All right, it grazed the bottom, but man, it went through all four cans of that there potted meat, man. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, that ain't no child's rifle. I don't care what anybody says. That ain't a kid's rifle. That shot through four cans of potted meat. I thought I could have swore it was going to stop it, but oh well. Well, hopefully this has been kind of a fun video. We are going to shoot some more stuff, but uh, this has been kind of fun. So let's, uh, let's think of some other things to uh, shoot up. This is not a Pringles commercial. We're gonna shoot this can of Pringles from the bottom forward all the way through. Let's see what happens when a 22 goes through a whole can of chips. Why not? Let's do it. All right, I'm gonna shoot this can of Pringles with a subsonic 22. I know it'll go all the way through, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. All right. Oh yeah, right in the middle. <laughs> let's go see the damage. All right, let's do it. All right, well we shot this can of Pringles and it did go all the way through. I don't think we have a chip that's not broken. Let's see what they look like. Who would think to shoot through a can of Pringles? You just don't eat them. Oh shoot yeah. Them. Eh. Oh well. Well, some cows are gonna be happy with some Pringles later. They'll eat them. Well, that was uh, somewhat uneventful. Oh well. Let's move on with something else. I think we can find some other interesting things to shoot. When I was going through the grocery store earlier, I don't know why, but I, I just grabbed chili sauce. So let's shoot some chili sauce, see what happens. All right, let's do some chili blasting here. Same ammunition, same rifle. Pretty, pretty good little number on it there. All right, let's try the one next to it there. Oh yeah. Those cans fly up in the air pretty nice, don't they? They don't really splatter, you know, like when you shoot them with a slug, but uh, I'll tell you what, in a future video, we're definitely gonna remedy that for you guys. We'll break out the slow-mo camera again and get some really cool stuff uh, going up in slow motion, so stay tuned for that for sure. Let's finish off these two cans here. There's one. All right, and we got a can of beans. Not bad. Well, guys, we really appreciate you watching our video today. Uh, this is a very neat little rifle. I can see where they would definitely be at home with an adult or a child or a young shooter, a lady, pretty much anybody. Um, a good camp uh, campsite uh, rifle. You know, suppressors definitely have their place out on the range and, uh, you know, out in the woods when it comes to hunting and that sort of thing. So um, we really appreciate you watching today's video. Uh, we've been working very hard to keep the content uh, pertinent and rolling along for you guys. Um, if you guys are ever curious about looking at any of these, I'm sure you can check out Keystone's website if you want to see more information, or uh, if you decide you want to come by the shop, uh, we'll be happy to show you a couple. I'm sure we have a few laying around. Uh, we do keep the cans in stock as well. Uh, if you ever want to come by, I'll be happy to demo one for you. But uh, anyway, we appreciate your time, and uh, we hope that you enjoyed uh, today's video, even though it was a little humorous. Uh, maybe you got to uh, see how these uh, rifles work uh, a little bit better, maybe know a little bit more about them. Uh, we have shot these rifles out to 440 yards, and uh, they do quite well. I know that seems like a long way for a 22. Um, everybody thinks that a small children's bolt action is just a toy and nothing more, but uh, I can most promi uh, certainly promise you that if you looked at those spam cans uh, getting shot up, it's definitely not a toy. These things will hurt you. You have to be careful. Uh, if you're a young person and you're interested in shooting with your parents, always ask permission before you shoot. You need to make sure you're following all the proper safety rules, have an adult with you. Uh, but most importantly, have fun. We appreciate you watching today's video. Have a good one.